everyone, I'm Jennifer from Luca Mariano Distillery and I'm gonna make two drinks for you guys today. Our first drink is a rye old fashioned to pair with the ribeye that Flavor Anonymous is going to be making. First, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a quarter ounce of simple syrup, about three to four dashes of bitters, and then you're gonna stir that around. And we like our old fashions with our Luca Mariano rye, so I'm gonna put an ounce and a half of our Luca Mario, Mariano rye. And then I'm gonna take an orange peel, and to get the twist on it, what I do is I just kind of do a little tight curl on it. And then I rub it around the top of the glass and then place it in. That's our Luca Mariano Rye Old Fashioned. Hey guys, this is uh, Shane and Mike from Flavor Anonymous. We're after the campgrounds this weekend, doing a little cooking uh, with our friends at Luca Mariano. Uh, doing a little food pairing with some bourbon and some fine steaks. Absolutely. What goes better with bourbon than beef? Beef. Right. Beef and some right, some righteous vegetables. Yeah. So it's not about being super complicated, but it is about doing the small things right. So we've got, you know, on the menu, we've got some asparagus wrapped in bacon. Yes. We've got those New York strips and we got your famous. Have some mashed potatoes with cilantro lime creme on top of them. A little bit of dirty gringo added to it really makes that stuff pop. Absolutely. Keep it simple, keep it tasty, and keep that beverage cold. Cold. By all means in the summertime, yes. All right. Let's get to cooking. All right, guys, we're gonna do some prep work today on these Hasselback potatoes. Uh, we're gonna use a sweet potato today. I know it's kind of different than what a lot of people do. And we've got a really nice cilantro uh, lime crema whipped up that we're gonna put on top of these. So basically, we've just gotten a couple sweet potatoes from the local market. I like to trim these little ends off of them because they just look bad. We've got the sprouts on them. Um, and basically, I'm just giving these things a good wash in the sink. People use chopsticks, little wooden blocks, whatever. When I do these, I just grab my two spoons here. They work. And what we're going to do is real carefully, just slice right down through. And the spoons are going to stop us from going all the way through 99% of the time. That 1% just happened on that first cut. Basically, I just go down through here and do about eighth inch slices in it. Trying to make sure I keep my fingers out of the way the whole time because your guests are gonna be impressed by these, but when they're covered in blood, maybe not so much. Just continue to go all the way down the length of it. And then we do the second one. Go ahead and take that off the end of it. Now, I know a lot of people are used to the traditional uh, sweet potato, butter, brown sugar, and that's great. The way we slice these up, that heat's going to get in between these pieces and kind of crisp the top of it. Uh, it's going to get done a little bit quicker the way we've done this. And we're not going to do a whole lot else to it but slice it and put it on there. The star of this show is going to be the uh, cilantro lime crema we've got done off to the side. Do this one the same way. You may have to use a little bit of pressure to keep your uh, spoons from falling out on you. It can be a little awkward at times. And every once in a while you get a blowout and just stick them right back in there. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and put these on the grill. You know, I'm always talking about hot spots and cool spots. I lit this thing in the center. So these back corners are gonna be just a little bit cooler than what the middle is. And that's where I'm gonna set these at. Right now we've got this little uh, M16 running at about 350. So we're gonna stack those in a corner while we prep the rest of this meal out. 
and go ahead and let them be getting happy while we're doing work. All right, let's get to the star of the show, the asparagus. I know normally people don't like asparagus, but anytime you wrap anything in bacon, it gets better. So we, this is really simple. I mean, really, really simple. Very complicated method. Just take your bundle of asparagus. What I like to do is typically I'll find one and I'll just kind of wrap it around. All right, to get you a good start. And roll it all the way down. And at the end, you're just gonna do the same thing. You're gonna kind of just tag it right there. Now, if you got a big bunch of asparagus like this, you can certainly use, what? More bacon. So just pick a different starting point. And just wrap it, and listen, these don't have to be ultra, ultra complicated. Believe me, you're giving people bacon that's been grilled with asparagus. There's nothing, you know, they're, they're not gonna grade you on, you know, did it have a bow tie or anything like that. Don't sweat that, this is gonna go on the grill. But what you wanna do is season it. And one of my favorite seasonings for this is basically a dried compound butter called Double Down from Flavor Anonymous. You don't have to get ultra artsy with how you put this on either. Your bacon's where it's going to stick. So mostly just shake it out, coat your bacon, get a little extra on there. You really want a good coating though. This is going to bring all the butter and the savory and all those umami flavors right to the forefront. So once you get it coated, stick it on a plate to the side and do a few more. Now one thing we didn't talk about was where to trim asparagus. And you'll see it's got like a woodsy end, like a whiter end. Just chop that right off. Keep it simple. Wrap it bacon. Throw you some double down on there. Put it on the grill. This, is, this meal's not about it being complicated. It's about doing the little things right to have a perfectly cooked steak with some interesting sides to go with that drink. All right, guys. We got a couple of prime strips we're gonna cook today from our buddy Kevin Green down at the butcher shop in Pensacola. So you've got different grades of meat, prime being the top. Now what makes a prime prime? The transformer? Is, is it Optimus? It's Optimus Prime. Yes, it is. So basically on a meat scale, you've got select, choice, and prime. These are prime steaks. And here's what makes these steaks prime is intermuscular fat on them. When I grade steaks to get the prime selection, it's not necessarily the fat cap on the meat or even the fat content of the cow itself. It's all about the intermuscular fat and what it brings to the table. So we usually season these about 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes before we put them on the grill. Right. If you were using, let's say, a lesser cut of steak, uh, a uh, you know select choice, you can hit these with about a tablespoon of salt. Right. and let them sit overnight and then actually bring a lot of flavor out in that steak. But today we're using the Flavor Anonymous Mood Enhancer. And man, that is like a umami bomb. It just brings everything beautiful to the beef. This stuff really brings that bold beefy flavor yeah. out. It's got some onion, it's got some garlic, it's got, uh, it's got a little Worcestershire kind of flavor in there, a little bit of soy, it's got everything. It just brings the beefiness out of it. Right. So next thing we're gonna do is take a little bit of the double down. That's right, so you left, you left my side, man. I had to come back and get that. <laughs> so the next thing we're gonna use is a little double down. So double down, when, when we made it, it's all about working with all that umami. Right. It is basically, think of a compound butter, the butter you put all those herbs in. We took dried butter, put all those herbs in the butter, and built double down. So it's this unctuous, flavorful, just bomb. It's everything you like about butter, with a nice herby texture yeah. to it. And it's not just for steaks or beef. This stuff is crazy good on vegetables. I love it in my corn. Do fried corn and skillet yep. with it all day long. Next now, up. To take this from mild to wild. A little ante up. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta ante it up, right? Ante up is basically Flavor Anonymous' grilling season seasoning. It tastes like a grill. It brings your grill into your kitchen. Right. Whether you're using a cast iron pan, maybe you do sous vide, maybe you're cooking on, uh, you know, on gas, 
and you want that charcoal flavor, Annie Up gets it there. So it's just that extra charcoal flavor enhancement, man. So we, we took these steaks from Prime to Optimus Prime now. So we're gonna throw these on the M16 back here and you're gonna love them. Yep. Let's do it. So our steaks have been on for a few minutes, Mike. D dro drop some knowledge on them. What, what, are we, what are we doing with them? We're gonna go ahead and spin these things around. You know, I think one of the things that I really like about these uh, M grills is that they were made for the grill grates. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have some great grill marks on these from the grill grates. Well, now let, let's talk about the grill grates. That, that's actually what these big lined, that's what these big lined things are right here. Right. You can see our potatoes are coming along nicely. Yep. Uh, they're, they're all but done. Yep. So we'll finish these steaks up. Um, how are we gonna do these steaks? Where are we gonna take these to? Well, dude, I think if you take these at anything above medium, you're kind of hard to be shot. I do too. Um, now, that's not to say you can't cook a steak well done, but if I paid the money for a prime or a Wagyu steak, man, I'm not I'm not overcooking that thing. Let you flip these, Mike. Let's, let's talk about how do we guarantee mm. we're not overcooking and we're not messing our steak up. You know, everyone talks about, I poke it and do this and then I pit. No, no, no. There's, no, there's really no, only no, no, one no. true way. There's only one true way. And that's to use a thermal pin. Or our steaks at? Our steaks are just about ready to come off here. What, so what's what's the temp you're looking for? I'm gonna take these steaks off at about 130. Yeah. So let's hit one more thing, cause man, I, I'm hungry and, oh. and I'm ready to eat. Oh. So let's talk about why we chose what we chose because of the Luca Mariano bourbon. So there's some great woodsy notes in there. Uh, it's got a little bit of heat to it on, on, on that bourbon. A little peppery. Yeah, a little peppery. So we got some sweet, Mm -hmm. and the sweet potato to bring that in and that uh, that lime crema cilantro lime crema is going to bring some bright it's going to bring a bright note to it all right um you know the beef is going to have a real deep flavor to yep. it with the seasonings we've yep. got on it i think that's going to pair nicely with their bourbon as well yeah i agree and then the asparagus Asparagus to me is close to beef it's very umami it's very savory yes but the sweet saltiness of, of that bacon. bacon with the double down. I'm telling you the double down on vegetables. I think when people catch on to that, yeah. they're really gonna love that. Yeah, no matter what drink you pair with this meal, it would be great, but it's even better with a great bourbon like Luca Mariano. We've got our Hasselback potato off the grill, our Hasselback sweet potato. These things turned out great. The thing I like about this is you get a lot of heat actually inside the potato. You don't necessarily get that fluffy texture you get from regular baked potato. These things are great to do on the grill. We've made today a little bit of uh, cilantro lime crema to go with this. So basically what we did was got the crema or the uh, Hispanic sour cream. We put a little bit of dirty gringo in there. Guys, if you've not tried this stuff right here, you're missing out on it. It brings a lot of flavor to it. Uh, it's got a great earthy taste to it. Um, is what I like about it. You get the cumin notes to it, you get some pepper notes to it. Uh, it's not by any means hot, but it has a great depth of flavor. So we went ahead and put that in there. We chopped up a little bit of cilantro in here. We've got a little bit of lime juice, and we've got some lime zest in here as well. With this potato, it's really gonna make it. Here's a list of ingredients so you can make this at home. So let's go ahead and stir this up a little more. We're gonna top our potato, a little bit of the cilantro lime crema. Then we've got some fresh uh, cilantro we're gonna top it with. Nothing says summertime freshness like a little bit of cilantro. No. So we've got our potato top. Now let's grab a steak and some asparagus out of here. Man, that thing's looking rested and good. Got a little side of asparagus to go with it. Wait a minute. Oh, Did you say steak? You got perfect time. Oh, that's I'm right. I'm glad you that's could right. show up to the party. I want you to look at how good that asparagus turned out. That it's double down man. on there. Dude, I cannot wait to tie into that. This is just a great plate. It, there's a lot of contrast here. I love there the creaminess. And I'll be honest with you, this crema, it would be good on all pieces of this. Oh, yeah. If you, you want to put, dip, dip your, your steak, steak in, in it, it put, yes. your, put your asparagus in it. It doesn't matter. I'll tell you, that crema, well, is, it's a great chip dip. Oh, it is. Yeah, it definitely is. Anything that you want to top it on, tacos? Yep. Be great on let's top of it. tacos. Well, dude, I ain't sharing with the flies. Uh, so uh, let's, 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 let's cut this thing. On here. 
Oh, oh nice, oh. nice little, nice little rare there. Got a nice little red streak through there. Yeah, guys, this right here is going to be the bee's knees. I'm here to tell you right now. Oh, so, so you've heard of GBD, right? Golden brown and delicious. This That's is tender, cool. juicy, and delicious. I guarantee you that. Try a piece of that. Heck yeah, I will. I'm for size. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna do this right here. Oh, not me. I want to go for that big, beefy flavor. Holy cow, mm. dude. That has to be one. Did of the you even have steaks. a piece? <laughs> that has to be one of the perfect steaks, I think. Mm. The flavor profile of that, guys, it is so deep. We got B and B charcoal. They mm -hmm. were cooking mm -hmm. over their char logs. <clears throat> the combination of the char logs and the um, hickory lump, man, what a flavor! Nice heat, nice flavor. That you can't beat that steak. I don't see how you would. I don't see why you try. That's awesome. You know what we're missing here, though? A Luca Mariano. Yes. Right. Where's our drink? We got it. We're going to go in and get our drink. We're going to go get some bourbon on some ice. Sit down and gobble this down, guys. Try this at home. Right. Thanks for joining us. This is Shane. That's Mike. We're Flavor Anonymous. Go buy some Luca Mariano. Grab you some Flavor Anonymous products and cook this steak. Try this at home next weekend, guys. All right. See you later. We made our Luca Mariano Rye Old Fashioned, so now we're gonna make our favorite summertime drink, which is our strawberry and bourbon iced tea. So first you're gonna take three large strawberries and chop them into quarters. One ounce of fresh lemon juice. We're gonna muddle that up. Once you get it all muddled up, you're going to add three-fourths ounce of simple syrup and one and a half ounce of our Luca Mariano Old Americano Bourbon. Then you're going to put the top on your shaker. Get it mixed up real good and shake it up. And then you're gonna pour it over a glass filled with fresh ice. And it's okay if some of your muddled up strawberries come out. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna top with unsweetened iced tea. And then to garnish, you're gonna take a strawberry, you're gonna put a slice down the middle of it and hang it on the outside of your glass. Cheers everyone, enjoy.